We're here at a secret location about a half an hour outside of Ithaca, New York, with a couple members of the Cornell University Baja SAE team to talk about uh, their ride that they've custom built. So we've got Connor, right? Yeah. And Alexander? Yep. How's it going? Good. Uh, if you guys could uh, walk me through the car a little bit, we'll start at the, the front here. You've got uh, some pretty beefy suspension there. Can you talk about that yeah. a little bit? So we have a custom design suspension. Uh, we designed it all in 3D CAD software. So uh, we have we use a roll center analysis to pick our suspension geometry in the front and rear, um, and we use the height of the roll center to tune the roll stiffness that we want to get the uh, correct understeer oversteer balance we want. Mm -hmm. And then we have we look at our instant center location for our, our wheel camber curves, um, and we place our steering rack to get the right Ackerman we want. So. If you watch the steering, you'll see that uh, we have a very fast steering ratio, which allows us to steer without going hand over hand. We also have a lot of uh, a lot of camera gain in steering, which we get by using a lot of cast on the upright. And if you look here, you'll see our custom machine uprights on a CNC, from a CNC machine, which give us the exact caster and camber scrub radius and mechanical trail that we want. Here we have our uh, custom axis shocks, which have high and low speed compression adjustment and rebound damping adjustment here. Then we use three separate springs to get the exact spring race we want. This spring here controls our ride height, so with these spacers we can control exactly where the car sits at static. Um, here you see our, our custom made body panels, which we, we CNC machine plugs for them on a big CNC out of foam, then make the molds and make the, the body panels themselves. Um, here we have some more composites. The seat was made by having me sit in a, in a driving position in a laser scanning machine, scan my back, and then they made the, the mold off of that. So you actually see the, the spine groove right in here. Um, so that, that makes comfort much better than uh, just guessing what a seat should be. We have here our steering wheel, which was, again, fully custom made out of composites. We have carbon Kevlar here, carbon here. And as we go back, you see here our drivetrain. So uh, back here, we have a, a 10 horsepower Briggs & Stratton engine, which is uh, standard for the competition. Um, we use a, a CVT. Uh, from CV Tech, a uh, company in Canada, um, and we custom made a two-speed, uh, high-low speed gearbox. Um, we got all the gears custom cut, and you can see the custom aluminum uh, CNC machine casing. Um, and also down here, um, we've been testing with carbon fiber drive shafts as well, and we custom made all of our uh, rear uprights and rear hubs so we could get uh, nice light rear hubs with uh, outboard brake rotors as well. Now you're not allowed to make any power modifications to the engine itself, is that no. right? No. Yes. So this is basically a bone stock engine built it into a completely custom built chassis with completely custom built suspension, hubs, seat, everything else, is that right? Yep. Yeah, but the only things we buy are the shocks and the engine the wheels. Now we've got a couple, a few of you guys here. How many people are there total involved with the team and building the car and designing it? Uh, there's about 35, I think. You guys range from freshmen all the way up to graduate students. Yeah. Great. About how many? I mean, do you guys have any feeling for how many hours of design and, and engineering have gone into, let's say, this car? This is last year's car, correct? Right. Do you have any concept for how many hours would have gone into uh, across the entire team designing and building this? Well, we're we're organized in sub teams, and uh, so the sub team leaders control what the design is for each each section. We have suspension, uh, composites, and all that drivetrain. And it's about uh, 40 hours a week average for each person. So. And it's on top of class load. Right. 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 So you can figure that out by the number of people. And it's basically full year program, designing, yeah. building, everything? Yeah, we do one car each year. So over there is last year's car. I think the car before last year. All right, so we got George from the team here. Uh, we just got our first session in the car. It was a lot of fun. If you could, tell us a little bit about the competition that you go through, what sort of challenges you're faced against, and what um, your competitors are like. Okay, um, well, first off, there's three North American competitions that we try to compete in every year. Um, last year, we had one in Alabama, 
and then after that in Oregon and the final one in Wisconsin, we competed in all three. Uh, teams are from all over the world, from as much as, I think we can identify like eight different countries represented there. Um, teams range from uh, first year teams that are just getting their feet wet to teams that have been around for 30 something years. Um, and then the dynamics of competition work like this. Uh, it's a four day competition. The first two days are um, uh, di uh, static events where day one, like they check all the rules on the car, make sure that everything's up to spec. Day two is you don't start the car, but you tell judges from Polaris, Honda, other uh, major off-road institutions about the car, what makes yours different and better and why you chose that. And, and then <laughs> you tell them why, what makes your car different, what makes it better and uh, all the testing and the di designing you went to, through. The last two days are dynamic events. This is the cool stuff, where the car races. Um, there are events uh, like a pull, a hill climb, maneuverability, up oh, here the hill. Suspension and traction, a mud bog, and things like that. And then the final day is a four hour endurance race, which really tests the durability of your car. And in that, there's 120 cars on the track at a time and uh, it's all wheel-to-wheel -wheel action, and it really, that's what really is the test of the car. So it's two days of basically scoring based on the engineering of the vehicle yeah. itself, and then three days of actually putting through spaces and, and testing the challenges and seeing how it competes in the real world? Two and two. Oh, two and two. Two okay. and two, yeah. Two days of all the engineering and testing, and then two days of actual real-world application. Yeah. Yeah. How have you guys been doing it? Well, last, uh, this past year we came, uh, we did really, really well. We've done the best we've overall done. Uh, our overall best place was 10th place at our Alabama competition. Uh, besides that, uh, it seems that we're mostly a design team. Mm -hmm. We tend to win all the, a lot of design events. Last year we won uh, overall design in Wisconsin, and then we placed in uh, design finals for the other two competitions. So we're always seen in the design end. And then uh, through the first day of dynamic events, we do really well. We came um, in Wisconsin, we came in second for the uh, tractor pull, which was a really hard event. Not a lot of cars can make it through. Mm -hmm. um, and then our weakest area seems to be the endurance race. When uh, due to unfortunate circumstances all the time, or maybe not enough testing on our part, or maybe yeah. some contact, <laughs> or maybe some contact there. with some other cars, uh, yeah, <clears throat> then uh, then we have to, you know, that's what we have to work on. And how many competitors are there in these challenges usually? Uh, between 90 and 120. Wow. And for that last day, they're all on the track at once if wow. they've survived the first three days. Wow, great. Mm -hmm.